Hey everybody, I'm very excited to have you down for this video where we are going to be showing what scratch golf looks like. We're going to be playing nine holes here at Reddish Vale, focusing in on course strategy, on stats, on how you can get yourselves around the golf course better. So no matter your ability from beginner to scratch golfer, there is going to be something in this video for you. And I'm delighted to say that this video is powered by my new channel partner, ShotScope. So we're going to be using the range finders, we're going to be using the GPS watch, but we're also going to be using the stats that ShotScope have collected over the years on everyday golfers to help understand and to better your game. This is going to be such an exciting video. Make sure you wall up that like button if you haven't already, and please give the channel a subscribe as well. We're going to be keeping score as we go along, so get down into those comments and let us know what you think I'm going to shoot. The first hole we've chosen here is, it's not the easiest to be honest. Starting on a par three is tricky anyway, but this one is tough. So I've got the Pro L1 rangefinder here. Now this does give me slope. So it's 132 to the pin, but with slope, it's actually playing 147. So the pin is towards the left of the green and you can probably just see there's this massive swale and this massive slope that's just gonna throw the ball into a pit of misery and despair. So we don't wanna go anywhere near that. But also Alistair McKenzie, when he designed this course down at Reddish, he's built a bank on the right-hand side. So if you get the distance right, there's no need to go for the flag. You can hit it to the right of the green, and if you push it a little bit, it's all gonna feed on and kick to the green. This is not a hole to attack, especially first thing in the morning. So I've got 132 to the pin, but it is playing 147. So my alignment, there's an out of bounds post in between the flag and the right bunker. Now that's gonna be my line. I know I've got the club to cover it, so if I push it right, it's gonna kick, and if I pull it a little bit, it's gonna be towards the center of the green. I don't want this being left of the flag. Simple as that. So focus on my line, commit to that shot. Go on there, go, go. Oh, well that literally, literally landed on the white post. This is gonna be a good day. I can feel it in me bones. So top tip here, aim for a target which isn't the pin. I know that might sound a little bit silly, but if you aim for something very specific, like a white post behind the green, it really focuses in the mind. It'll also help you play a safer shot. Sometimes it is right to attack, but sometimes you gotta play the percentages. Go, turn, do something. <laughs> it's fine, it's a par. So I've got some really cool data here from ShotScope about average driver distances, but also when you should be looking to hit the driver. Now this data is taken from 2021 across the whole year through handicap ranges, from scratch handicap up to a 25. And what is revealing here, and I can attest to this from giving lessons, people always overestimate how far they hit it. If you ask someone how far they hit the driver, they're gonna tell you the furthest drive they've ever hit not what they do on average. The advent of strokes gained as well is very, very eye-opening because what it shows is often better to be further down the hole and in the rough than 20 yards back and in the fairway. And I know there's a lot of purists are gonna be saying, nah, but you can control it more from the fairway. And it is important to hit the short grass at certain times. But coming out of the semi-rough with a wedge is gonna be better than coming out of the fairway with a mid iron. And this hole is a fantastic example of when you might be tempted to hit a driver, even though it's tight. So I've got out of bounds all the way down the left-hand side. The hole is only 322 yards to the center. But if I aim off to the right-hand side and I hit a big flaring slice, something which I, and I'm sure many people watching this, can identify with, I'm still gonna be left a wedge in. That's gonna be better than just plodding a little four iron off this tee down onto the fairway. Over the course of a season, the stats don't lie. You are gonna be better being further down the hole than shorter. We'll get onto putting stats shortly, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of freedom here. The stats actually show that driving is often more important than putting. So now when you're bashing drivers away at the range, you can say, well, Pete told me to do this. Just make sure you get a lesson first and practice properly. So I am gonna be aiming here at the middle of the towel blocks in the distance. And if it goes straight, it's fine. It's just gonna leave me a wedge across. If it draws, great, that's gonna get near the green. And even if I snap hook it, it's gonna be fine. Oh my God, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be so good. I hit that little bit of a pull. That's gonna be class.
very exciting times. I have a laminated sheet of paper with me. It means it's more official than a normal piece of paper. That's a fact. Now I've got a tricky par three here. We've got 160 yards. Now, according to my gapping sheet here, you can see the three quarter seven iron would be perfect. However, I do not want to be short of this pin. So short of this pin and to the right, that's where all the trouble is. If you go a little bit long on this green, it's absolutely fine. And this feeds in to my next top tip. Don't let ego interfere with club selection. Because what the shot scope data shows is that if amateurs miss a green, generally it's sure it's not hitting enough club. And also, if you think about it, a lot of golf club designs, all the danger is short of the green. They're designed to catch approach shots, which are going at the green and then it gets short. There are obvious examples, but generally danger long is less likely than danger short. So I've got 160 yards here. If I go three quarter six iron, that's 170 yards. There's a tiny bit of breeze into just after the pin. Per perfect, perfect sign. Oh, please go in. And a quick note on distances as well. If you have lessons, fantastic, but try and book in a gapping session with a pro who has a launch monitor. I prefer GC Quad, it's closed data, it's very, very accurate, but any launch monitor really will do to give you an idea of how far you hit your clubs. It's well worth the investment. 14th hole, and let's have a little bit of a chat about course management and the type of shots you wanna be hitting. So if you have a look down the hole and at some of the hazards here, so we've got 83 to clear the river, Fingers crossed we can do that. So we've got the layup option. Now that's quite a wide part. It's going to leave us about I don't know, 130, 140 yards in. But we've also got this gap. So between the last fairway bunker on the right, which is 240, we've got 293 to the one by the green. So I carry my driver further than that. So does it make any sense laying up on this hole? Absolutely not, because I've also got the next hole to the right hand side. Again, this is all about judging what the best option is. I could lay up, but why not just whack it? I mean, that's just my motto. And also my next top tip, just whack it when appropriate. Ah, oh, perfect. Just left of the green, opens up the pin. So the difference between a scratch handicapper and a high handicapper, from 30 feet, it's actually not that great. So from that distance, you're looking at a scratch handicapper making 4% of their puts, whilst a 25 handicapper will be making 2% of their putt. So really only a couple percent difference. And as the ball gets closer to the hole, there are differences and the scratch golfers are generally better, but it is next to the hole. This is where the huge difference lies. So what the stat shows is that from zero to six feet, a higher handicapper, they're going to be making 82% of these putts. Whereas a scratch golfer, they're going to be making 92%. So that is a 10% difference. And that over the course of a season is huge. So my top tip, the longer puts, as long as you can get them in and around the hole, that's fine. But you should be spending the majority of your practice time, especially if you don't have loads, which I know a lot of you don't, on the short puts. If you've got an hour of practice, just focus on six foot and under because this is percentage wise where you're going to make the biggest difference to your game. Well, I'd say at the moment, this is the absolute definition of scratch golf. Level par. So the par 5 15th, this is where my distance actually gives me a huge advantage because I can carry it over the trees on the left hand side and that gives me actually quite a wide landing zone. However, for many golfers, this is where core strategy really comes into play. So what we're gonna do, we'll pull up the driver distances again because it's a perfect example of core strategy here. That slope in the middle of the fairway, to clear that, we're gonna be looking at 180 yards. Now we already know that most golfers don't hit it as far as they think in relation to average driving distances, we're gonna be pitching straight into that slope. So it's gonna make much more sense to just hit a shot down to the right hand side, it's a par five, and then hit it over to the left. I'm gonna be going over these trees, but only because 
I have the distance and the carry to get over there. So this is the one time where actually understanding a whole layout will help you make the correct decision. That's massive. That's gigantic, like that's that big, it's huge. Well, after that absolute stonking drive, 142 yards left in on this par five. I'll take it. Chance for an eagle, right to left. -er. Zoom in on that kid, look at that. That Seahawk is just mocking me. I think I've waited my 10 seconds. Okay, so let's have a look at what my watch is telling me. So I've got 294 to reach the ditch in this fairway. 100 yards back will be 244. But I'm going to hit my three wood, which should lead me in between a wedge on. Hopefully we can get to two under for these nine holes. My target lies two yellow posts in the background. Fairways right to left. I'm feeling it. Mm -mm -mm. Go on. Oh, it's just slightly left of those two yellow posts, but we'll survive. Just a flick onto the green from there. This is, this is good. This is good. Once again, proves the fact that if you talk through your shots, you're written better. 67 left in. I just want to say a massive thank you to ShotScope for being a part of the channel, sponsoring this video, bringing all these stats to you guys. Subscribe to the channel and I need you to smash that like button with unbridled enthusiasm if we make a birdie here. It's just gonna be half 58, pitching it short, letting it trundle, just tapping it in. If I make Eagle, then you gotta go subscribe to Swing Quest channel as well. Although you should do that anyway. Do that anyway. Oh, it's long again, man. Just hitting it too hard. Just too strong. I've hit that so hard. That, that is, that was going back in the water. But you know what? They all count. Like the video, subscribe. Thanks for coming down. Get down into those comments as well. Let us know some of the best things that help you get better at golf. We are a community and we do like to share. Three under. That's the line. Two under. Need the coffee. <clears throat> I'm also getting emotional. Okay, time to go. See you later. Bye.